if we look to the mesentery of ruminants, we find it short compared to uh, the horse, for example, or to other animals. And that's why it is difficult to get parts of the intestine on in uh, ruminants outside in case of surgery. Now we will speak about another part of the connecting peritoneum called the omentum. When we hear the word omentum, we should remember the stomach. Omentum means cover. What happened? We have here the dorsal mesogastrium, the ventral mesogastrium, and the dorsal mesogastrium, as we know, the spleen will develop, and the ventral mesogastrium, the liver will develop. The part of the stomach, between the stomach and the, the part of the mesentery between the stomach and the liver, number three, this is called lesser omentum. The part of the mesentery between the stomach and the dorsal body wall, this part will become the greater omentum. What happened? The stomach will start to rotate and the dorsal mesentery will elongate and it will be like this. So the dorsal mesogastrium will become two layers, outer layer or superficial layer of the greater omentum, and this will be the deep layer of the greater omentum. And there will be a sac in between. Let us see this in more detail. Here is the stomach, and this is the lesser curvature of the stomach, and the, big, the initial part of the duodenum, and all of this is the greater curvature of the stomach. The part of the peritoneum attached to the lesser curvature of the stomach and the beginning of the duodenum is the lesser omentum. The part attached to the greater curvature is the greater omentum. The lesser omentum has two parts because it will be attached from here to the liver. So it has two parts. The first part between the liver and the stomach is called the hepatogastric and the second part between the liver and the initial part of the duodenum is called the hepatoduodenal ligament. The greater omentum, this part, will have three main parts. The part which will make the persa is called the persal portion and parts which contain the spleen is called the splenic portion which is present uh, between the stomach and the spleen called gastrosplenic ligament and the third part which is called the veal containing the left lobe of the pancreas. Let us see this uh, paramedian section of the abdominal cavity of the dog. Here is the liver covered by this dotted line representing the parietal peritoneum. And here is the stomach. And here is the lesser omentum between the liver and the stomach, hepatogastric, number six. Then from the greater curvature, we will have the greater omentum. The greater omentum will start here and go like this. All of this goes up to the urinary bladder. Here is the urinary bladder. Then the greater omentum will start to reflect upon itself and gets back again cranially and upward to engulf the pancreas. Then it will go and attach to the dorsal body wall. Okay, so the lesser omentum we just mentioned has two parts, hepatogastric between the liver and the stomach and hepatoduodenal between the liver and the initial part of the duodenum. It is important to know that the lesser omentum covers the papillary process of the caudate lobe of the liver, as we will see in the lab.
Now we will speak about the greater momentum. This is the greater momentum. It is apron-like, like an apron covering the viscera. Here, this is the stomach. Here is the liver. Here is the spleen. And all of this part is the greater momentum. It is like an apron covering the viscera. So when we open the abdomen, this, the only organs we will see is liver, stomach, spleen, urinary bladder. The rest of the intestine, uh, or all parts of the intestine, will be covered by this greater moment. Here is, uh, here is uh, another view showing the layers of the greater momentum. This is the superficial layer of the greater momentum, and this is the deep layer of the greater momentum. Then here is the left lobe of the pancreas. Then the rest will reach to the wall of the abdomen, dorsal wall of the abdomen. So, superficial layer of the greater momentum, then we'll have this deep layer of the greater momentum. The cavity in between the superficial layer and the deep layer, this space is called the omental persa or persa omentalis. Now we will speak about the epiploic foramen or omental foramen. If we get back to these uh, images here and this area, this space which will lead into this persa, this is the epiploic foramen. So the epiploic foramen is the entrance to the omental persa. What is the clinical importance of this? epiploic foramen we know that this epiploic foramen is the narrow entrance to the omental persa so sometimes this epiploic foramen allows uh, parts of the intestine to go through and get trapped within the omental persa and uh, this strangulation will make colic and uh, make problems in different animals, even in human. So the epiploic foramen is short passage between the mental persa and the main peritoneal cavity. It is found at the base of the caudate lobe of the liver in all domestic animals. In the cow, the epiploic foramen is a slit-like opening, very uh, narrow. It's about 6 to 8 centimeters and can be seen as in other animals at the base of the caudate lobe of the liver from the right side. Again, the omental foramen is a site of intestinal herniation or entrapment of different parts of the intestine or colon. Uh, and it will lead to colic in horses, especially in horses and in uh, other animals as well. What are the boundaries of the epiploc foramen? Dorsally, we will find the caudal vena cava. Where is it? Let us look at this image. Here is the uh, animal in a dorsal recom recompense. This is a cross section. Here is the uh, thoracic vertebra number 12. The aorta and the caudal or the vena zygus and the caudal vena cava. Uh, then we will have the spleen. This is the uh, left side, and here is the liver. And the caudal vena cava is here. So here is the caudal vena cava, and this is the portal vein. Between the portal vein and the caudal vena cava, this is the epiploic frame. This is the epiploic frame. So it is between two veins which mean if part of the intestine gets through this foramen and strangulated and we would like to widen this opening, we cannot. Why? You will 
make a bleeding if you cut here or here. Here is portal vein and here is the caudal vena cave. You have to decompress the uh, strangulated or the entrapped uh, loop of the intestine. You have to uh, aspirate or uh, cool it anyway, but not enlarging the opening. So how can I find the epiploic foramen? Go to the right side of the visceral surface of the liver and lift the caudate loop. Locate the caudal vena cava and the portal vein. Put your finger between these two veins to reach into the omental pers. Why this is important? Also because sometimes in uh, some operations, like the uh, cholecystectomy, if there is a bleeding from the cystic artery or any uh, bleeding near the liver, and you'd like to uh, stop or control this bleeding, you put your finger and uh, at the epiploic frame and, and press to stop and control this uh, bleeding. So this is what we just mentioned before. Here is the greater momentum also in human. Here is the abdomen. Now we remove the skin. What we will see, we will see no intestine, just the liver and the gallbladder, part of the stomach, but this is the apron covering the uh, intestine. Then under uh, the greater momentum, you can find the uh, small and large intestine. The same in the dog. The liver, the stomach, the spleen, and the greater omentum, and part of the urinary bladder. The greater omentum is well developed in the dog. Uh, so in ventral uh, incision, during surgery, only we have just mentioned, we will see the spleen, stomach, part of the liver, and urinary bladder. Uh, it is important to understand that the peritoneum should not be sutured separately when closing uh, an abdominal incision during laparotomy. So it should be included with other uh, layers during suture be, and try to uh, make less trauma to the peritoneum to prevent uh, the adhesion as we mentioned before. The ruminant uh, animals have very well developed greater momentum. The greater momentum in ruminants, as we will, we will study in detail, is very well developed. And as you see here in this image, it covers also most of the structures uh, on the right side in this view. Only what we will see is the descending duodenum and uh, the most of the vestra are covered by the greater omen. On the uh, opposite, in case of uh, equine, this is the greater omentum, is very short. You see, this is the stomach, here is the spleen, and this is the greater omentum. This is the part of the greater omentum, which is called the gastrosplenic ligament, and this is the greater momentum. How short it is, it is not uh, very long or uh, very large as compared to uh, the dog or uh, the ruminant. It is poorly developed in equine. The clinical importance of the greater momentum. Since the greater momentum is very mobile or mobile, so the surgeon sometimes Tack bits of the greater omentum at sides of the open viscera. So when the uh, open viscera, he want to, to fix the open viscera to something, so he fix it to the greater omentum. And so when heal, it will heal, it can still move because the greater omentum is movable. Since the greater omentum is vascular, so it could be used for by surgeons. Uh, to aid in revascularization of some areas, especially uh, in, in chronic conditions. So this is a process is called omentalization 
where we use the greater momentum to uh, enhance the process of healing. The greater momentum also is called polisman of the abdomen because it limits the spread of infection uh, either due to its high uh, content of macrophages and lymphocytes, uh, which is called milk spots. Uh, also, uh, the, the, the greater omentum prevent uh, omental adhesions, uh, as we mentioned. Uh, not prevent omental adhesions, sorry. I, I mean, in, in, in some conditions, the greater omentum can cover the area which has the inflammation uh, and surround it and start to make uh, adhesion in this region and prevent the spread of, uh, of the infection. In cases also of uh, ciliotomy, uh, if you followed the greater omentum uh, and trace it, it can lead you to the uh, problem inside the abdomen. So for all of these reasons, uh, it, they call it polisman of the abdomen. Uh, for your notice, the greater momentum can be removed without impairing the health of the uh, animal. Uh, the greater momentum, if it is cut or removed, it will not regenerate. Now let us get back to the process of the mesentery and its development.